Welcome, boys and girls, to the third lecture video <laughs> of kinematics. And uh, hopefully you've watched the first two videos where we first talk about different definitions around kinematics, namely displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And then we begin to do all the graphing kung fu. And all the graphing kung fu, hopefully it will give you a new appreciation to what we're doing here now, which is to derive the kinematics equation. And uh, if you come from IGCS, it will be the first time you encounter this equation. If you come from SPM, then this shouldn't be new to you. So let us start with the derivation. Would well, they ask? Uh, they can ask. Uh, they have asked a few times in the objectives. Okay. So let's say I have a VT graph here. And I have an object with an initial speed u and a final speed v. All right, I'll just mark out all these points, okay? So as usual, you can copy along or you can find the notes in the content library. Copy along. Lah. It'll make things easier for you to understand, all right? So let's say u is the initial velocity and v is the final velocity. And let's say it took a time t for the velocity to change that much. So gradient of your vt graph once again would be the acceleration because now your velocity is changing, ma. So we'll take the change in velocity divided by time just to help those who are struggling with the idea of gradient. I drew the line out. So the height of the triangle is V minus U. And the base of the triangle is T. So we will take V minus U over T. So physics people, oh, we don't like negative sign. We don't like fraction. So we rearrange. And then we get this equation. V is equal to U plus AT. Okay. Next equation, area of VT graph is displacement. So it looks like a trapezium to me. So I'll take S is equal to half U plus V times T because U and V is the uh, parallel length and T is the height of the trapezium. By the way, I don't know whether you notice or not, these two equations have certain properties. For example, the first equation has no S. No displacement. Second equation has no A. This actually will help us select a suitable equation when it comes to problem solving. But you know, I also want some equations with no T or no V, for example. So I'm going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2 to get rid of the V. All right. And that would give me S is equal to half U plus V times T. All right. So U plus V times T. But that V can be substituted as U plus AT. So then I open bracket law and do some form 2 algebra. U plus U is 2U plus AT. So I'll end up S is UT plus half AT squared. Ta -da! So we use this equation if the question doesn't give us information about V or it's not asking us to find V. And this would be the good information, good equation to use. All right, number four. I want an equation with no t. So I'm going to rearrange the equation. t will now be equal to v minus u over a based on the equation on top. So I'm going to substitute this one into equation 2. You don't substitute the same equation into the same equation, okay? Don't do that noob move. So s will now be equal to u plus v. t is v minus u over a. Time to rearrange. We don't like fractions. So 2a, throw one side. You get v plus u, v minus u. So this is v square minus u square, popular algebraic identity. And we use v square is equal to u square plus 2as because once again, we don't like negative sign. This one has no t. So these four equations right, are important because what equation to use depends on what you have or what you don't have. For example, here you don't have s. So use this equation. Oh. This one has no a, this one has no v, this one has no t. And you notice that the proof is fairly straightforward, is by substitution. For the first two equations, I use a property of the VT graph. If the VT graph is not a straight line, all four of these equations cannot use Liao. Oh my god, Uncle Roger will come and scold you, cannot, cannot. A has to be constant because this is a straight line. If it's not a straight line, gradient cannot find using this equation. Okay? Uh, Displacement cannot find using this equation, and this two can throw away already. Lah. Now, the good news here is uh, equation number three and four, this two, is given to you in the exam. Okay, 
just because they give it to you doesn't mean you know how to use, okay? Just saying, uh, all right? So now, uh, I think we can continue, all right? So when we continue, right, there are a few things to note. So this four, I like to call this Stuva equation uh, because Stuva is a bookshelf in IKEA, okay? So um, you think I joke, but it is not. This is Stuva, bookshelf. In fact, if you watch the Try Guys, they tried to build one before without the manual. It is a Lamau. Okay, so Stuva. Anyway, since Stuva is a bookshelf, you can see the OBS that I use for recording. Let us change the screen very quickly. Okay, and we are back. Late, so I'm not going to edit that part out. So you can see, right, whenever we have this uh, four stuva or kinematics equation, I would prefer if you are very unfamiliar, list down stuva first, and beware of the positive negative sign, especially if they're not traveling in the same direction. And you must must have constant acceleration mass if the acceleration is not constant or not the same you cannot use stuva unless you chop it up now i'm going to draw a lot of exclamation point besides the mass and the second one uh, there's this equation that i see all the time do not use v is equal to s over t or s is equal to ut unless your a is zero unless you are very 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 sure the a is zero is that enough very or not so when you when i see this only means you have not been doing any of your work, you haven't learned anything in your A-levels, this equation has to be purged from your memory, okay? Use it only when A is zero because if you look at this equation, this equation number three here, when your A is zero, this term disappears, you get velocity is S over T, see? This equation is actually this equation when your A is zero. Do not use this anymore unless you are very sure your A is zero. Like, very sure. You know the A is zero. Okay, huh? so continue. Okay, must have constant acceleration. Don't use this. And number four, be very aware of the time interval. I will discuss a few examples in this video to explain to you what I mean by time interval. Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, a very recent past year question from ON19, paper 1-3. This is in page 26. No, I'll start with the earlier one first, my bad. Okay, so May, June 15, paper 1-2, uh, page 14. Here you have a sprinter, and the sprinter, right, is running a 100-meter race in a straight line, you don't say. He accelerates from the starting block at a constant acceleration of 2.5, reaches his maximum speed of 10 meter per second, fast boy. He maintains the speed until he crosses the finish line, stamina boy. So, which time does it take the sprinter to run the race? Alright, I'm going to solve this first by trying to use the kinematics equation. Let's say I put STUVA. Hey. Okay, so he is going to run 100 meter. I need to chop up the 100 meter into two sections. The first section, he's accelerating at 2.5 meter per second. Okay, constant acceleration. Ma. And then the second section, second section, he maintains the same speed. So your acceleration is zero. And you can use your favorite equation. All right. So I know S1 plus S2 is 100. Lah, and it maintains the 10 meter per second for a perceivable long time until you reach the finish line. So let's say I take Stuva for the first half of the portion. S is S1. T is, don't have, you're looking for it. U is zero because uh, start at the starting block. Okay. And your acceleration is 2.5. And this V is 10 meter per second. Lah. Okay. Then he maintains the same speed. Okay. Let's do STUVA for the second half. So when S is S2, acceleration is 0, U and V are both 10 meter per second. Okay? And this is because you say you maintain the speed, right? So U and V will be 10 meter per second. Okay, now which equation to use? Don't forget, uh, we need to find time. So if you choose an equation with no T, it is very the paint. Okay? 
So let's say you want to choose this one. Okay. And uh, if you choose that one, right, let me pause for a while and go back. Let's say you use this equation. Oh, you will notice a few problems. Number one, you will get S is equal to S1. But you don't know what S1 is. I mean, you can take S1 plus S2. All right. And then at the same time, this T that you find here is not this T that you want. Okay, you can try, uh, you can continue down this route and tell me what the problem is. But to save some time, okay, I noticed the problem and I edited it out. Okay, so now let's continue. The time is not the same. All right, anyway, um, I can use V squared as U squared plus 2AS. And what I'm trying to achieve here is actually to look for my S, how far it has traveled. Okay, this S1 here would be 20 meter okay and the time period here is not the same okay because there's a certain time from s1 and a certain time for s2 later i will show you lah. so since s1 plus s2 is 100 so now here i'm going to use s is ut plus half at square and i can use this here because this time interval is something that i can find okay how you do this is really up to you lah. it's like many ways to solve a puzzle okay so let us continue I'm going to use this equation because I can find t, okay? And since your acceleration is 0, this one will be 0 at the back, wall. so s2 is 10t. So now I can take s1, which is 20, plus 10t is equal to 100. You can once again ask me, Miss, why don't you uh, use b squared as u squared plus 2 s because I'm looking for t, okay? So let's continue. So I get t is equal to 8 seconds, meaning the entire duration for s2 is 8 seconds. Okay, so I also need to find the duration for S1. How long did it take to accelerate from 0 to 10 meter per second? So to find this T1, I can use simple equation. Maybe I can use uh, S is half U plus V times T. I can use B is U plus AT. I many equations. Okay, let's say I use this one. All right. So from here, I will get 20 is equal to half, 0 plus 10 times t. And I can find my t, law, and t will conveniently be 4 seconds. So in this case, right, my friends, you need to think about it this way. There are many ways to reach here. I choose to go this way so that I don't have some weird quadratics. Okay, because when I use half at squared, I also notice there's a quadratic there. And there are two times I need to find, and then I'm like, Nah, this is fine. All right, so this is four seconds. So the answer will be uh, four plus eight, lah, which is 12. Now, there's a faster way to do this. Some of you tell me you don't like to draw graph, but the fastest way to draw to solve this question is by actually sketching out a graph, as you will see later in certain other examples. Okay, so let's say I draw a graph of um, V against T because that's the most useful graph ever. So the velocity is going to increase uniformly to 10 meter per second and then it's going to maintain until you reach 100. Lah. Okay, so let's think about it. I know the acceleration is 2.5 meter per second. So the gradient of this line will be 2.5 meter per second. So 10 divided by what will give you 2.5? Hmm, 10 divided by 4, lo. that's why this is 4 second. And I know this area here will now be 20 meter because 10 times 4 divided by 2 is 20, meaning the remaining rectangle will be 80 meter. Okay? The remaining rectangle will be 80 meter because in front the area of the triangle is 20 meter. That makes a 100 meter race. There we go. Alright, so to have 80 meter here in the red triangle, since I have 10, as the speed that I need to travel as 8 seconds to cover 80 meter. So 8 plus 4 is 12. Ta -da! Hence, graph is always preferable, always nicer to use than Stuva. But we will be using a lot of kinematics equation when we move on to the other subtopics in the chapter. Okay, let's do another question. This is uh, OL19, paper 1 3. You have a lead sphere that's released from rest. Wait, am I doing that question? I don't think I'm doing that question. I think I skipped that question. So the video will be short. Okay, you do lah. I put it in the task for you. 
Okay, anyway, you have a car moving with uniform acceleration along a straight road, and the oil leaks from the car at the rate of one drop every two seconds. So if one drop drops, wait, if the drop, the oil drop drops every two seconds, what am I talking about? This is the distance. Lah. So obviously the car is accelerating because the distance between the drops are increasing. This, by the way, is exactly like a ticker timer. Okay? So, what is the acceleration of the car? Well, to find the acceleration of the car, you know the gap here is 2 seconds, 2 seconds, right? I need to find the average speed between the oil drops. Lah. Okay? So, let's say here is the speed. So, let's call this average initial speed. Okay, and uh, to find it, I would just take 9 over 2, total distance divided by total time, 4.5 meter per second. And I repeat the same thing for the average final speed, which is 12 divided by 2, which is 6 meter per second. Okay, so I'll then take V minus U over T, which is 6 minus 4.5. How long did it take? You're talking about middle of the dot to middle of the dot, so it's 2 seconds. And that will give you 0 0.75 meter per second squared. Okay, that would be this one, pretty straightforward. Is there any stuva? And the A is V minus U over T is a stuva equation. No? Okay. Alright, now we do the lat sphere. The lat sphere is released from rest at point X, U equal to 0, a long, long way above the surface of the planet. The sphere falls a vol in a vacuum. After 4 seconds, this is might not be planet Earth, okay? So we don't know what the gravitational acceleration is. But after falling 4 seconds, it has fallen through a vertical distance of 3 meter. Let's assume the acceleration is constant. Yay, you can use equation. How far would the sphere have fallen from point X at the time 20 seconds after this release? Oh boy. So 4 seconds, we would travel... Uh, to 3 meter. So the question here is at 20 second. I'll keep writing 10 as 20. I don't know why. But then it will change. Lah. Okay. So now um when t is equal to 20 seconds, let's say it's traveling faster now, obviously this is v2. Mm, how far is the distance? Okay, you might be thinking, Miss, I draw graph now. I'm smart now. Okay, fine. So you can see the velocity will increase uniformly. Okay, so this is 3, this is 20. Okay, and uh, sorry, it's 4 seconds. 4 seconds travel 3 meter. Not 3 meter. Uh, this area, is my mouth there correct? This area is 3. So I guess you could use area under the graph there, half times, half times, four times this value, let's say h, h, sorry, v1 is equal to 3. I guess you can find v1 at 1.5. So I'll put 1.5 there. Okay. And from here, you can find the acceleration already. Or you can ask yourself, oh, hmm, if constant acceleration means there's constant gradient because this is a VT graph. I didn't label the x-axis, but it's a VT graph. So I can say V2 over 20, which is the final speed, is equal to 1.5 over 4. And then I can find my V2. Long. Let me hide myself a bit. I can find my V2, right? V2 would be 7.5 meter per second. Wow! I can use S is half the... This is the entire area, which is 75 meter, the area of the triangle, right? Okay, or if you decide, if you decide to use something like stuva, so we need to fill in the stuva. Now, I know in the first portion, after traveling 4 seconds and traveling across a distance of 3 meter, I can use this to find my acceleration, which is 6 over 16. So I'm just substituting uh, because I got no V, so I use the equation. So the second part, I'm using the same acceleration. And the reason why I'm using the same acceleration 
is because this whole thing is constant. It's a uniform acceleration. But whatever I choose to use, right, look at my decision here. I have no information about V. Like this 7.5, I don't know. So I don't use it. Lah. I just find the acceleration 6 over 16. Okay. So after that, I put the acceleration here. I know it will travel 20 seconds. I will amend it later. Okay. And then I'm looking for displacement. So V is once again not a concern. So I don't have to look for V. So S will be equal to half 6 over 16 times 20. Hmm, 20 squared. And this will also give me 75 meter. Okay. Which one you prefer? You like la? Can do, can now. Okay. So that is all. Please go try your task or the other example. Like this train one is very interesting. And the one that has the free fall one with this equation also very interesting. I wanted to discuss, but the video is running a bit long. So I will see you. Put this in your task. Lah. We will discuss in class. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Toodles. Take care.